In the 1940s, nearly half a million lions roamed Africa and Asia. Today, fewer than 20,000 remain, squeezed in on all sides by growing human populations. Despite millions of dollars spent on lion conservation in recent decades, their numbers are still declining. There must be a bright idea out there somewhere. Lions are the number one tourist attraction to Kenya, and tourism is one of the top revenue earners. Yet lion numbers have declined from 15,000 just 10 years ago to fewer than 2,000 today. Wherever humans and lions share habitats, conflict leads to lions being killed, and nowhere is this more apparent than in Nairobi. Kenya's capital is one of Africa's fastest growing cities, 4 million residents and growing at 7% per year. It's the fastest growing city in the world. Nairobi National Park occupies 16% of the city. No other capital city in the world has a park with wild rhinos, lions and other wildlife. The park is fenced along its northern boundary, but is open to the south, linking it to a wider ecosystem and allowing wildlife to make crucial seasonal migrations. And that means sharing land with people. This poses a unique challenge for the park and the city residents. Wherever wildlife goes, lions follow. They can even survive in Nairobi's more affluent suburbs, navigating fences in built-up areas. But inevitably, they kill livestock, leading to disastrous consequences. In 2007, so many of the park's lions were killed by the community that they were almost wiped out. The pressure is so great now that we could lose them altogether. We need an affordable solution that empowers people to deal with the problem themselves. Maasai wealth is measured in cattle. From the age of nine, Richard was responsible for managing the family's most valuable assets. By age 11, he'd had enough of lion attacks. If the lions come from the forest and then come to eat our cattle, it's very bad. If I see the lion now, I feel that something uh, is something that is ready to attack me. Me and the lion, we are enemies, enemies, big enemies that we can never be uh, forg uh, forgive each another any day. One night, he had a bright idea. This is the belly. It is being charged by the solar panel. It's there in the roof. And this is the wires that carry the power to the bulbs. And this is the switch where you can switch the lights on and off. Richard's brainchild is one of the first practical solutions to the lion-human conflict problem. It's saving cattle, lions and money. I knew the lions are, were afraid of something which is moving. Because when someone wakes up at night and moves with a torch, the lions are afraid of the lights because they are thinking this is a person which is coming. Since 2009, uh, I started putting our home the bulbs, so we didn't ever experience any problem of the lions coming at home until now. So the neighboring homes have even borrowed my dear. Since now, I've put it six homes, the bulbs. As conservationists in Africa, we really need to recognize and support local practical ideas that emerge from young people like Richard. We're proud to have helped Richard to get a scholarship to one of Kenya's top schools, Brookhouse International. All it took was one bright idea. Richard never dreamed that he could be someone that saved lions. 